GD here, Tyrell Limus, and we are back on F1 2021 as always. And we are continuing with our Hot Lap and Serp series, this time arriving at Zazuka. So as always, just glossing over the first lap and then dissecting it for the second one. And honestly, I can't believe I've actually gone this far <laughs> into a Hot Lap and Serp series, mainly because I've just enjoyed this game so much. So I really hope you found these videos useful. I will be doing a lot more tutorial and tip videos in the future along with a mastering series per track where we go through the wet laps, the race strategies, go into even more detail and maybe even updating the setup if we need to, um, if there's a patch or anything such as that. So again, I really hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for the support on the channel as well. And Zazuka, a track that I absolutely love and quite similar story to other tracks. This lap here, I think with a perfect lap, it could be close to the world record, but the setup is not really designed for that. I did use the world record setup, and although it was good, and I think it's probably is faster over a lap, I just found it very inconsistent and very twitching oversteery, where it over rotates a lot. And if it hits the curb, you pretty much spin instantly. My setups are trying to be as raceable as possible. And like the Suzuka last game, I went for a bit more of an understeery setup. And once the tire wear and everything kicks in, I find that's really is key. And I found that to be key in this game. So I find this setup is going to be very, very good online. Still quick over a lap, but definitely designed to be good in a race situation, which around here you really, really do need. So we're going to dissect this app now. So at the start finish line, Going into this turn one, is a lot of it is really by feel around the circuit. Although there are reference points when you do pause them. So going into here, wouldn't be looking as a tarmac in between the 150 meter board there sticks out. That's where you want to be turning, braking flat out. As the curve finishes, that's where you want to do a little dab on the brake. Use all of the track. Try and get as close to this inside curb as you can and let it drift out on the exit. Going to this corner again by feeling I hold it in fifth gear to let the engine do a little bit of the braking. I don't lose any time by doing that compared to sixth gear. Stay nice and tight to this curb. A slight kiss on it as you go into the middle of a track. That's where you want to be turning, really attacking these corners nice and early. You just want to be throwing it in as much apex speed as you can. Up shifting into fifth gear. Stay to this right hand side. And if you look at this patch in the middle of the track here, that's where you want to be completing you're turning, going completely flat out in fifth gear just to make sure the car is stable. Then up into sit once you feel you have that stability, stay nice and tight. And then going into this corner, a very, very tricky one, but a very crucial one. Just before the 50 meter board, that's when you want to complete your turning. Use a lot of curb on this inside. You really have to attack this. As the curb finishes, that's when we do a slight dab on the brake, turn in, kiss this curb on the inside and use all of the curb on the exit and we did that pretty nicely. Now coming into this hairpin, as the wheel is straight, that's where I do all of my braking. So we're gonna slow it down here. And you can see as the wheel's straight, that's where I do all my braking. And then as I go off the brakes, that's when I start turning again, double shifting to third gear. Just try and stay relatively tight on this exit. Don't let it drift out too much. And we actually get a very good exit on that occasion. Stay tight to the right hand side, because it will gain you a slight bit of lap time. Now going to Spoon, one of my favorite corners on the game. As you hit the 50 meter board, that's when we do a slight dab on the brake and downshift into fifth gear. So throw in as much speed as you can. Try not to mount this curb, but on the exit, put half your car here. Any more than that, it will unsettle the car. That's when you want to downshift into fourth gear, up into fifth, and then early as you dare on the throttle using all the track on the exit. Similar as going to Spoon, you want to stay nice and tight to the corner, hugging it minimizing the distance of the track. 130R, a comfortable fat up, but again, stay tight, don't let it drift out wide because you will gain lap time. And into this corner, very late braking zone, but just before the 100 meter board, that's when you want to be braking and then turning in. Use a lot of curb going into, you really have to attack it. And then going to left-hander, immediately turn very early once again, and you can see almost all of the car is on that curb, helped by the setup. And then it's a winking away to the line. I just count an attraction. We actually gained so much time in that last sector because we're able to use the curbs with the setup 
and I feel it has better traction. It enabled us to do that. See, P6 on the leaderboard, a competitive time still, but again, I feel this SERP I'm running is going to be so much more usable in a race situation uh, because the ones up ahead with LMG, as I said, I think they probably are quicker over a lap, but I just found it just a little bit too twitchy for my liking. The wings are the same though, so we are both running 7-9 wings, but it's everything else in the setup that's actually quite a bit different. So 60 off-throttle, I find that to actually be very good. I use 80 to 85 uh, on throttle because uh, it's very important to have that traction potential, but 60 works very well. You can see the front camber just to make sure the car is stable through the high speed rear camber just to get a little bit of that rotation, particularly through the hairpins and the final chicane. And the front toe is quite high just to give you that high speed grip that you really do need. And then the rear toe is pretty much going to be always all the way to the left. As we move on to suspension, one free suspension. So that's a very, very soft suspension. That means you've got to have a very good traction. It's going to be very good over the curbs. And that's why it's going to be very good in the race situation. And you can see 2.7, 2.7, pretty much almost a normal as I use. And it just seems to work uh, for me personally. You can see here, 156 brakes. And tire pressures are absolute max. Just to get that really that stability in the high speed and that responsiveness due to other parts of the setup being a little bit more on the understeer side and for that straight line speed as well in a race situation it, i just feel it's going to be very very good so hopefully you have found this useful as always thank you so much for support i really hope these have been helping you out a main video will be most likely always be coming at 5 p.m on a weekday every time so again hope you're enjoying the game and you can see by the lap times, as I say, if you're doing consistently fast lap times, we're doing 0.4s every lap. I think that's really what you'll be aiming for rather than just doing the one-off lap. If you're consistently almost hitting your PB, then I think that's a pretty good sign. So thank you so much and I'll catch you soon. Peace.